Afternoon, guys. Pete McDowell, NFC TV. Um, tell us, first of all, Brendan, how much you're looking forward to this tour? Yeah, very much so. I think it's, uh, it's a very exciting trip for the, uh, for the football club. I think it was 2004 was the last time the, the club was ventured over into that American Canada region. So, um, so no, we're really looking forward to it. Um, obviously, two objectives, really. First and foremost, it's part of our preparation in terms of uh, our training and work to get ready for the new season. And obviously, it's good for me to see the players as well in a, in a different light. And uh, so, team bonding and social bonding as well is important. And, uh, and like I say, great to take the football club to uh, our worldwide supporters because it's it's a club like I've said before. It's a real football institution, Liverpool, and with many supporters not only here but in Liverpool, uh, Liverpool and worldwide. So, so we look forward to it. Of course, that first game against Toronto will be your first as Liverpool manager. That will give you a great seat of pride, I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's as it our work is is geared towards the obviously the games and uh, and like I say, we've got some very good games over there. Um, and like I say, it's it's always proud for me to represent the club every day because it's a way of life. Um, but to take in the games, you start to get to see the players and um, and like I say, the most important thing still at that stage would be. <laughs> them trying to gain the fitness level. You're going to be based at Harvard, I believe, as well, which is a fairly historic and also inspiring surroundings for, for you and your players. Yeah, absolutely. It was something I had a, a friend who I've known for many years who actually went to Harvard University. And I remember him many years ago telling me that the one thing he learned about when he first went into Harvard on the first day was about being ruthlessly simple because they've got great academics and a lot of very intelligent people that go to that uh, that college or university, of course, but uh, but they were told to keep it simple, and I think it's something that's always stayed with me throughout my work. That uh, it, it really is about being ruthlessly simple on and off the field, and and like I say, something that I've carried with me over over many years. Uh, Jay, one one for you. I mean, as a as a boyhood Liverpool fan, the fact that you've been able to see the reaction you get around the world. This is just another example of it, isn't it? To, to be able to see the looks on fans' faces. Yeah, as you say, last year we went away to the Far East and the moment we got there we had fans waiting at 5 o'clock in the morning waiting for us to arrive and I don't think any of the players could believe the, the, the amount of people who stood there waiting at that sort of time and again now we want to go across to America and expand our, our fan base and obviously make them proud and play some good football hopefully. It's obvious for you, I suppose Lucas, it gets you a little bit closer to, to playing football again which is what you've been desperate for for so long. Yeah, well, still in, <clears throat> in the progress of my rehab, uh, I could train with the team for a few days but uh, still a long way to go and a lot of work to be done but uh, very happy to be able to train and and looking forward to the new season. Uh, Brandon Vinny from Sky Sports, um, th how much importance do you put on pre-season tours like this given that they encompass two aims I suppose in getting the lads ready but also in, in growing the worldwide audience? And that's exactly it, I think it's very important for, for a club of this status to I said, you have to embark on these types of trips. It's very important because, like you say, we've got a worldwide audience, um, and, and and it's twofold. You know, it's very important the preparation for the players because ultimately we'll get judged by what we do on the field. So it's it's trying to cover all bases, technically, tactically, physically, and mentally, whilst we're away. Uh, and like I say, it's important for the supporters to feel close to the players. A lot of these supporters never get the chance to be so near uh, the players of this club, and um, and we look forward to to the three games and going to the three venues and, and taking part in hopefully what will be very good games. Is there a bit of added pressure to perform given that it's in the owner's home? Not at all. <laughs> Not at all. Not Fenway Park. Listen, our three games <clears throat> are, uh, are all prestigious games, but of course when you, uh, when you play at Fenway Park, that is one of the most celebrated and prestigious venues in American sport. So, uh, so I'm just really looking forward to the whole experience, but there's no pressure. No pressure. Hopefully not in a pre-season game. It's nice, though, I suppose, to be able to go over there and see the owners part of the, of the set-up and what have you. Yeah, absolutely. It? They've been fantastic since uh, the first day that I've met them. And, and I think over the period of time, I think all the supporters and people will see that they're going to be give great value to this football club. I think they're real honest and, and like I say, they're very ambitious for the football club. And uh, I think everyone is together as one. To, to ensure that we can bring back the success to uh, to Liverpool, but but certainly for them it's it's great for us to to go over there, and I'm sure they'll really enjoy having us uh, at, uh, at obviously in Canada and obviously in America.
Are there likely to be any new signings before you head off? We hope so. There certainly won't be as many as what's been, <laughs> been labelled out there. I think the reality is that for players to be associated with, with Liverpool, it's great. But the, the reality is we've only made three, four inquiries about players and, and we hopefully can close out one deal this week and maybe two, but uh, but certainly hopefully we can do one and uh, and then look to add to that over the course of the pre-season. Are you able to clarify some situations? Granero, the reports that you've had a bid turned down by Real Madrid. What is the situation there? The situation is very simple. I will never speak about targets and <laughs> possible players and it's not something that I... I like to do, to be honest. So, uh, all I will say is that there's been a whole raft of players linked. We come into Liverpool, and there's very, very few of them that are actually real targets for us. So, uh, but like I say, I, I don't like to speak about that. There have also been players linked with possible moves away, and Andy Carroll and uh, has been linked with a possible loan move to AC Milan. What's your take on that? He's a good player, Andy. So uh, he'll always be always be linked, whether he's here or. Or not so um no nah, listen it's something i've spoken to andy uh on his holiday so uh you know he knows exactly where he stands i've had the chance to speak to a lot of the players you know so now nah, he's a very good young player and uh, and like i say he will be he'll be linked with clubs like that because he is such a good player has there been any inquiry from them no i haven't i haven't had anything from them at all no a bigger part then is andy in your future plans for the for the forthcoming season I think initially it's just really about assessing the, the group and, and the squad and, and looking at the strengths. You never heard no entirely until you, you come in and obviously the pre-season is a little bit broken this year because of players away and from the championships and recovering. Um, but certainly come the beginning of the season I hope to have the squad that we can take through because obviously after August that's you then through until uh, January. So uh, it'll just be the case of piecing it together through until then and and building a squad that hopefully can compete at the top end of the league, and that's that's ideally what I want to do. And are Joe Cole and Aquilani likely to be part of that as well, or are they likely to be offloaded this summer? Same answer. The both players that are back, I've had a good chat with Alberto the other day, and he's a good guy. He's obviously hasn't really worked out for him uh, as of yet, but, uh, but he's a player that he's got the qualities in terms of technical and tactical ability to play. Uh, but what's going to be important for every player is that they have the, the style and, and, and the mindset to play, which will be very important. And that's something that I'll find out over the course of pre-season about all the players. Have you been able to sort anything with Craig Bellamy yet as well? No, I had a good meeting with Craig. Uh, last Monday it was. Uh, just getting a feel for where he was at. You know, I've known Craig obviously for a little while, so uh, no, we had a good open conversation in, in terms of where he's at. He's, he's th 33 later this week, so he, he knows he's pushing on an age a wee bit, but he's, he's fine, he, he looks after himself well and, and like I say, I'll, uh, I'll speak with him over the course of the summer and then we'll, we'll take it from there. How important do you think it is as well having someone like Lucas coming back to, to full fitness now? Uh, obviously he's played such a, a big part in, in, in the Liverpool first team. I think he's been incredible in relation to, if you think back to his story here when he first came in as a young kid. I remember Lucas when he was playing for Brazil when we were watching... Uh, those in the youth championships, he was the captain of the, the team that had Pato on that in it, which was a brilliant and a very good side. Um, so I've known him for a number of years and known his qualities. Uh, obviously difficult for him when he came in at the start, but he's really shown not only his football on ability, but his, his real strength of character. And over the last 18 months or so, has really been a real prominent figure in the team. And, uh, and obviously there is a relationship to maybe the form just slightly dipping off when he came out of the side. So it's not rocket science. When you lose one of your top players, it affects your performance. And But he, he's he's a great guy. He's, he's a good worker. He's he's very professional in his work. And it's good to see him out mixing with the team again and, and getting involved. Uh, and likewise with Jay, a young player that's come through the system here. And again, I've known him since he was a, a young player. Uh, got great qualities and a player who will have the soul of the club in his heart. So, uh, so like I say, both very good players and, uh, and and players that will represent the club very well. How important is it having, obviously, the local lads who know about the, the heart and history of Liverpool Football Club, but also the players that have been brought in from elsewhere who have really bought into that kind of ethic here? Yeah, I think it's very clear when you, when you arrive at Liverpool. As I said, there's a lot of wonderful nostalgia associated with... 
with Liverpool as a football club. You know, you go around and you know we've got two legends in the room here. Where we might see if we can get their boots on over in America. But uh, but as I said, it's a wonderful club with a great history. And as a manager, you need to have a sense of that history. But it's also very much about the present and the future. And uh, and for me, like I say, Liverpool is not just an English club. It's an international club. And for that, the core of the team will have British players. But for me, as I said, it doesn't matter where they come from. If they're talent and they buy into the ethos and the culture of the club, that's the most important element. Lucas, will you be ready for the start of the season? Um, I think I will I'll be thinking every week to to recover, to progress. Uh, it's, it's still f four or five weeks to, to start the season for our Europa League game. So it's still early to say if I will be ready, but uh, I'm looking forward to, to start the season and be able to to play. So, yeah, just uh, going every day and see how I feel and, and, and improving. I think it's the main thing now and and hopefully it'll be OK for the beginning of the season. What do you think about the prospect of having to impress a new manager again? Yeah, well, uh, it's been a very good three days and uh, the players are really happy the way we are we are training and the sessions. I think it's <clears throat> it's a new it's a new manager that everyone will will try to impress him and try to to be on the team. But uh, the most important thing is to, as he said, uh, to build a, a strong squad, and we will have a lot of games during the season, and and I think everybody will have uh, the chance to to prove. Jay, with a young player breaking into the first team, is it more difficult when there's been a, a change of manager to, to continually impress us? You've been through a, a few changes of manager so far in your early career. Yeah, the, recently there's been a few changes at the club and every single manager's come in, it's been a new slate, not just for myself like, as a young player, but even for the older players, the, likes, the rest of them, they've all got to knuckle down and show the new manager exactly what they're capable of doing and they want to fight for the, for the fight for the place. And Again, it's a new start all over again and exactly what Lucas said, we're all working hard in each training session that we get, it's a new start for everyone with the, with the new manager, a new new way of playing, if, if you want to say. And I think all the players are really looking forward to it and we're all knuckling down, looking forward to it to start in the games and as I say we've got four weeks now to get ourselves ready for it and there's not no better pre-season to go on to and hopefully try and get some fitness ready. And you welcome that challenge of potential new faces coming in? Yeah, as I say, it's, I'm at a club which, again which is worldwide and international and I don't think there's going to be many players who aren't going to say oh, I'd love to come to Liverpool and being a local lad I'm lucky enough to, to play for my, my, group, my team that I've always supported and wanted to and even um, as you say new players will come in maybe some after summer and or, or in the January transfer window when I have to stake my claim and show to the manager that um, he doesn't have to go and buy players in my position. But it's also for the rest of us, I think any player has to prove themselves and what they're capable of doing. I suppose given the, the calibre of player that you've had to compete against anyway, it stands you in good stead, doesn't it? Yeah, it's a, um, like Stevie G and Bian Lucas and like Sam and Lonzo has been here and Mascherano and we could probably go on for a long time now with the amount of players who've been in, you say, my position here, but I have to just concentrate on myself and knuckle down and try and work hard and show the manager that if, if needed and again, the amount of games this season that's going to be around it, I'm ready for whenever needed. Brennan, you've been at Liverpool now for a little over a month. Do you feel now you've got a, a clear idea of how you want your, your team to play and how you want that side to look? Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, but it's got to take time. There, there's, there's no question about that. Liverpool as a football club, of course, is renowned for, for winning trophies. And, uh, and of course, that's, that's what we look to him to do. For me, it's, it's more than that as well. It's to try and bring a model and a a system of play that will go through the club and a philosophy that hopefully can recreate and, and change the history again for the football club. Um, so it's a bigger challenge. I'm very much focused on the football club as a whole. Uh, like I say, the transition for me coming in has been so smooth because of the people at the football club who have been incredible and afforded me a great welcome. But also the people of the city have really welcomed me in. And I would say both sets of supporters. I've got to say I've met a lot of Everton supporters as well who have been welcome me into the city and that which is which has been fantastic so uh, but of course moving forward like I say I want to be able to implement a certain way of playing which will be the Liverpool way but that'll take time and uh, but ultimately it's about winning games and uh, and being effective and that's all you know that, that's our aim over the course of the, the coming years. I know you've met with a lot of the players have you have you been pleased with the way they've responded to you and, and the way they responded to you in the, in the three days you've had to train? 
fantastic. Yeah, it's been good. It's been good actually because there's a mixture. Obviously, the players that have come in, there's only been 10, 10 or 11 or so. A few of them are just starting to come back. Martin Skirtle came back at the weekend. But it's also given me a chance to see some of the talents uh, within the academy, of which there are a number of those as well. So, uh, of course, it's a bit broken and you prefer to have your squad back altogether as early as possible. But uh, but in other ways, it's, it's good because there's lots of positives you can take. And the players have been fantastic. I've always found them experienced that the best players are the best people. And, uh, and you normally find those guys at the, the top end, they're good guys and, and they want to work well. And their challenge is to work hard and to, and to improve. So, um, so really, that, that's aligned with how I see the game and, and the mentality of football. And uh, as I said, they, they've responded very well. And that seems uh, another important part of you bringing players into the club. You, you only want players who, who want to play for Liverpool for the right reasons, it seems. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is a club where it's a way of life. It's not just turning up and have an hour and a half, two hours training and go away. And when you, when you become a Liverpool player, it's a way of life. So you have to be prepared to come into the culture and, and the philosophy of the football club. If you don't, listen, there's no problem. But this is the wrong fit for you. I want players that are hungry to succeed and, and want to match the ambitions of how we want to move forward. Um, and the reality of that is there's very, very few players who can match that. That's why it makes me smile when there's so many players linked. I won't be bringing in many. One, because we haven't a, a wheelbarrow load of money. So there's not all the money probably flying about that people think there is. We want to work with the great players that we've got here at the moment and just make, you know, maybe three or four tweaks in relation to the squad that can help the group and help us all achieve what we want to achieve, which is, like I say, I repeat, to be competitive in every game and to be challenging at the top end. And do you feel ready to deal with the, the weight of expectation that I suppose will, you know, come on your shoulders very quickly in the new season? Yeah, absolutely. That's... It's all part of the dance, and that's the that's why when you you come to a club with this, you know, such a prestigious job, you know, like I said, it's a privilege for me to manage. It's certainly not a chore, and but dealing with pressure is is a part of that. So um, there'll be many challenges, and you know, I'll make mistakes along the way. There's absolutely no question about that. But what I'll do is I'll fight for my life to to ensure that we can improve and and become better, and and hopefully learn from their mistakes and. Like I say, if we all unite as one, you know, the, the players, the club, the city, then if you've got that, then it can take us a long way. Okay. Jay, is, is there a, a different feeling among the players? Is it, is it always like that when a new manager comes in or is there a sense that something's changed? No, I think whenever a new manager comes in, again, the, the main criteria is that everybody's got to knuckle down and try and get working hard and show to the, ma the new manager exactly what, the, what they're all about and they want to fight for the place for the, for the new season ahead. And, uh, the manager you've been to, to give pe different people different chances and again it's a clean slate for everybody and we've all got to keep working hard now and hopefully focus for the games ahead with the amount of games as you say with the Europa League coming soon we've all got to be ready for that. Is there, are you doing things differently in training or anything changed that you would notice? I say different managers have different types of sessions it's going to be different styles and different ways they want to play and we have to get ourselves knuckled down and we have to learn it quite quick if you want to become a successful team and I think the squad that we've got which is obviously the young lads coming through like the manager said the, the academy lads are up there now training with us and they're really showing exactly what they're all about and the lads who are still on international like finishing international duty they'll come back and I think once the squad gets all back together we'll, we'll have to look forward and get this, get this club back where it should be. And Lucas, one for you. How hard was it last season to, to have to sit out and watch the team and, and ultimately struggle towards the end of the season? Well, uh, it was hard because I never had a, an, ex, an injury like, like that. I hope I won't have again. And, uh, well, always it's hard to, to watch from the telly, especially uh, the time that I was really enjoying my football and playing with a lot of confidence. But uh, I'll be back uh, the same level that I was because I'm working really hard to to recover and uh, and the players that I have uh, beside me I think will help me. Uh, I just have to be patient again. I think my life in Liverpool has been like that. So yeah, looking forward to 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 meet the the players coming back from the Euros and 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 start the season. I think uh, everybody is really excited for the for the new season. Thank you. Paul mentioned Redmond TV. Uh, Brendan, 
looking ahead to this tour, the teams that you're going to be facing off against, a lot of new managers uh, start at the clubs as well. How competitive do you think the tournament's going to be with, obviously, players looking to impress at every club? I think when you're at a club at Liverpool, every game's important. Of course, for, for myself, there's a different vision on, on the games, but every game is, a, you know, when you represent, whether it's a pre-season, a testimonial game or a league game, cup game, whatever, every game is important. But uh, But ultimately, it's about building towards where we want to go. It won't be perfect in pre-season, that's for sure. Um, but we'll be looking to start to implement some of the principles and aims of which we hope uh, can take place tactically within the team. And, and like you say, that'll bear fruition as we as we progress through. Um, but like you say, the teams will have the different managers and, and like you say, they want to own, put their own stamp on it. And, and that's something that we hope to do over the, the course of the coming weeks. Uh, obviously, Liverpool historically tend to come good the back end of the season with obviously you're looking to instill a new tactical regimen within the squad can you see that it might take until January before things gel you know and you have the team playing the way you want them to play absolutely I think your your game and how you play your principles of that it is down to the players that you have you know of course ultimately I like the teams to, to win and win in a certain style and, but it's a style and a way of winning which is become accustomed to, to Liverpool Football Club. This is what it's about. But of course, that does take time. That's that's the reality of it. You know, we're, we're football coaches, not magicians. And it's something that, uh, like I say, your principles of your game based on your on your players. And uh, But I believe in the players that we have. They've got great qualities. And, um, and tactically, with a few adjustments and a few structural changes to that, I think we can improve. So, uh, and, that, and that's ultimately what we'll do. So... It's important to make a good start. If we can make a good start, it'd be great. But ultimately, we'll be judged at uh, in May, and and that'll be the as is the outcome to to finish well by then. Uh, Jim Gordon from the Anfield. Um, how seriously are we going to be taking the Europa League and the other cups this season in comparison to the Premier League? Well, very seriously. I'm one that I believe if you're in it, you want to try and win it. That's my my feeling on it. So. Uh, I'll have a squad of 25 players that I hope can, can see us be strong in every single competition. The reality is we want to ensure that we, we, we can improve on our league status. That's the, the reality. In the last three seasons, the club has finished between 6th, 7th and 8th. So we want to improve on that and build it and move upwards. But, but like I say, every game, when you're a player for Liverpool Football Club, the intention is to win. And like I say... Hopefully, in the comp competitions as well, we can do very well. Just following on from that, then, if, um, if we're going to take those competitions seriously, will it be difficult to give the young players a chance, the, the, the academy lads you just mentioned, um, to break into the first team? For me, it's about personality. You know, if you look at Robbie Fowler here and, and Ian, both given a chance when they were young players. And, uh, and like I say, for me, I've already made it quite clear to the, the youngsters and, and the staff within the academy that. If you're if you're good enough, no matter what your age, you'll play. So you've got to have a certain quality, of course, to play as a young player at a big club. But if you've got talent and personality, then there's no problem. I've done that throughout my my, my early careers as a manager. You know, I've 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 looked at talents and players, and if they've been good enough, they've played. So uh, so like I say, it's about uh, how you deal with the pressure, of course, and uh, but also nurturing that talent.